Hello, Booktube. Um, it's been a long day. Uh, this time of year it can be busy for libraries. Um, I started out with uh, visiting a library book sale down in Springfield, Vermont, for the Springfield Town Library. It's held in their armory. Very nice book sale. Um, got there at about 9.30. Some booksellers in front of us. Um, it opened at 10. I've been to book sales where booksellers can be a bit of a... I think it be a little bit uh, rude. Uh, but this was not the case today. And um, ended the day uh, preparing for a big program at my own library tomorrow where we are doing some scenes from Shakespeare and I've got a speech to give and all that. So um, the little foray into a book hall was fun relaxing way to start the day and I and I, I did pretty good I, I found some things I liked um, and I wanted to show them and share them so the first thing I found was this modern library thing famous science fiction stories adventures in time and space edited by Raymond J Healy and uh, J Francis McComas and G 31 for giant number 31 Did a little layout for a uh, modern library and then if you open her up you can see the other editions that you could buy I'm not sure um, well, let me give you this so it's modern library in New York copyright 1946 and 57 by Random House Incorporated I'm not sure if you were to do a modern library edition or any other edition of famous science fiction stories that all in fact I'm I am sure that all of them would not make it but there are some gems in here this is very heavily in, influenced by the John W Campbell years and and they were great years they changed the course of science fiction John W Campbell Jr. had huge influence um, And his stables, his stable of writers are, are well represented. Represented, um, he was the editor of Astounding. So I, I'll read you who some of these are. Um, you're going to recognize most of them, or you won't recognize most of them. You'll recognize ones I say. You may recognize some that you know I don't think would have stood the test of time. So it starts right off with Robert A. Hyman. You have. Uh, Lester Del Rey, A. E. Vanvo, Eric Frank Russell, Louis Paget. I don't know where he would fall. Willie Lay. Willie Lay did a lot of the um, when I was a boy rocket ship books. I mean, you know, I grew up in the Apollo era, and so rocket ship books were a big deal. Alfred Bester, Isaac Asimov's Nightfall. It's still, it's still a classic. Anthony Boucher, great writer. Robert A. Heinlein again, the road must roll. A. Van Gogh again, uh, Elsbrake de Camp. Um, so, uh, Frederick Brown. I think Frederick Brown would still make it a little bit. So, th th this is a nice little volume. Again, time is a leveler, right? So, maybe not all the stories would be. And, and it was done in 46. Science fiction has moved on into the future, which is what it should do. The next one was a nice little Viking edition of Graham Greene's Our Man in Havana. The dust jack is a little beat up in a few corners, but I can always cover it or whatever. I don't know if you can see this, it lights pretty rough, because three dollars and fifty cents. Um, 1958, the Viking Press, New York. Um, second printing, so it's, it's not a first edition, not even a first American edition. This is one of those classics that I've, uh, I, I think I read it when I was in my 20s. 
I've been in my 20s a couple times. So this uh been a long time since I've read this one. I'd, I'd be interested to see how it's aged. I mean, I haven't heard anybody talk about it recently, but uh, it's still a famous book. And then, I have this book in a paperback, a McBooks Press. I'm a big McBooks Press fan, but to find a hardbound copy to put alongside my paperbound copy, this is Alexander Kent, Passage to Mutiny, Mutiny, excuse me, one of our foremost writers of naval fiction. He certainly is. This is a great picture of him. His actual name is Douglas Riemann, and he wrote under that name an um, awful lot of World War II type of uh, nautical fiction. I enjoy him. I mean, I'm working on the shelf tours that will eventually work into... Alexander Kent and Douglas Freeman books. Now, the Alexander Kent was the name he used when he was doing Age of Sail novels. Um, there's the list at the time this book was published right here. Um, I've got a shelf full of them. There was a lot. He just, he just passed recently. Um, so, uh, this, is this is first American edition of 1976. And uh, I, was, I was thrilled to find this. I, I will keep this alongside my, my McBooks Press copy. Um, another nautical fiction is Dewey Lambden, uh, an Alan Lurie naval adventure, The Gun Catch. Um, Dewey Lambden, a self-described Navy brat, has been a sailor since 76 with special taste for cruising in the Gulf of Mexico and his sloop. He's the author of four previous Alan Lurie novels, all published by Down Alive Fine Incorporated. Uh, these are good books. Uh, there's a heck of a lot more than four of them now. I have no idea how many of them there are. So this is the gun catch. Prior to that, there was... Uh, King's Coat, King's Commission, French Admiral, and King's Privateer. This is uh, copyright 1993, and is the first American edition. So, always happy to find Mr. Lambden. It's a good read. Next thing I found was this. This is a pretty well-known book. Pretty nice edition of it, though. This is The Defeat of the Spanish Armada by Garrett Mattingly. Uh, beautifully illustrated, so it's a later edition. I don't even know if the first edition was illustrated. This was a, like one of those scholarly, but well-written, like popularizing type volumes. I'm not even sure what I'm saying here. It caught people's Im oh, yeah. Dr. John D. Is an astrologer. Um, it caught people's imagination, and then it was in print for a long time. I have no idea if it still is. And, and a lot of home libraries, when I was a young man, had it. Um, I've always enjoyed it, and I haven't had a copy in years. And this this is um, this was actually with the illustrations was put out by. Uh, so it first came out in 59, uh, there was a second edition in 83, and that's when this came out with, um, with the illustration. So very, very nice book. Um, I, I don't have a copy, so I'm glad to get this. Then we'll continue on with a slightly maritime theme. I just did a shelf tour. I'm, I'm not even sure if I've posted it yet. Ham and Dennis, um, not a name you hear a lot about anymore, but if you like thrillers, and, and from a fella who was not, he was a great world traveler, he really was, uh, he wrote a book years ago, I think it was called Passport Dinners, uh, you see his name right there, um, I enjoyed his adventure novels about the sea, some of them were made into movies. 
He was married to the British actress, uh, let's see, they say her name here, I'm not a big movie guy, uh, let's see, I say they say his name here, her name here, oh, Dorothy Lang, so the, so if you're a movie buff, you probably know way more about this than I do, I was an adventure novel buff, so I knew about him, and growing up I read tons of his paperbacks, and they were just wonderful, so this is Medusa, and it was New York, uh, Athenaeum, 1988. I'm not sure how much longer he lived than this. Um, I didn't, I don't know the dates. Uh, if I was reviewing him, I'd look all that up, but it's a book also. Very excited, very excited to find this. Now we're getting into some different types of things. The dust jacket on this is really beat up, as you can see, and I'll probably have to get rid of it, sadly enough, because I, I, I would have really liked to find it in a good one, but I'm going to grab the book while I can. It's Collected the Essays of Aldous Huxley, one of the famous intellectual family from Britain. Harper and Brothers, New York. And a whole slew of dates. Let's see, the latest one is uh, 1958. Curtis Publishing Company, Harper, uh, let's see, this is from Harper and Brothers, New York, uh, I've never seen this book, I mean, I used to own a copy of the Perennial Philosophy or something like that when I was a divinity student, but, um, so let's look, section one, nature, Wordsworth in the tropics, or under travel, you'd get something like, um, in a Tunisian oasis. Um, in Love, Sex, and Physical Beauty, you'd get uh, Sermons and Cats. I don't know how to follow that. Um, in Literature, you might get something like D.H. Lawrence. Painting, um, Meditation on El Greco, which I can see Huxley doing. Music, you might get Grisaldo's Variations on a Musical Theme. In Matters of Taste and Style, you get uh, Variations on a Baroque Tomb. Oh, that sounds interesting. Under History, you'd get uh, something like Usually Destroyed. I'm saying usually because I'm reading one out of a whole list of essays. That Some of them seem to be pretty short. Under Politics, well, it seems appropriate to our time. Well, it's probably appropriate to all times. Words and Behavior. Under Psychology... Uh, a case of voluntary ignorance. I don't know why I picked that one. And then uh, Rx for Sense and Psyche. Well, I'll read both of those. The Doors of Perception and Drugs that Shape Men's Minds. And then under Way, way of Life, um, Knowledge and Understanding. Oh, I, I don't know. I may just cover the... That's Jagger, I mean, throw it out, I don't know. Would love to have had it and a little less sun-drained and a little less wriggled up. But all of these hardbacks were $2 and all the paperbacks were $1. I only got one, one paperback, so today I spent $20. So. This next book. Shakespeare of London, Marchette Shoot, is a perennial, one of those volumes you almost always see at uh, library book sales. But that doesn't make it any less valuable. Um, I've built up a little bit of a Shakespeare library, very small. I mean, you could spend the rest of your life just building a Shakespeare library. And uh, this, this beat up old Vermont house has probably got 2,500 books in it. And if I had just done Shakespeare books, that means I just had scratched the surface of Shakespeare books, I think. Um, here's the end papers. If I can get this thing open right there. And. Uh, I don't know why I've never read this. This is a book of month club thing. 
it's not worth it. Oh, it's worth two dollars. Here's a little book of the month club insert. I don't know why I've never read this. Um, very famous book. Just I don't know if it's great, but I, th I think it's just, from what I've heard, it's worth reading. And I've I've uh, spent a lot of time on Shakespeare lately. Um, we've been no, I like this. This is nice. We've been doing a lot of it at my library, um, just reading in groups, and I, I think that's uh, that's valuable. When I was a young man, uh, I had a wonderful English teacher. I would have been middle school, whatever that is. It would back and forth. We used to, in those days we had reel to reel uh, projectors. Would show scenes from Macbeth and then we'd read it, and it caught my imagination. But then um, I never, never followed through on it with anything. And uh, now that I am, we have this group where we read every, I think it's every Wednesday in the winter, and then in, in, the, in the summer we've just been doing this one project. So we've uh, we've done Richard the Third and tied it in with the Josephine Tay novel. Um, we've done um, Hamlet, and uh, for our performance tomorrow, we're doing an opening scene of Macbeth, and then the opening scene of um, The Taming of the Shrew. So, um, it's been fun. So, I thought I'd grab this and finally, after all these years, read it. Sure, a lot of you have read it. So, Marchant Shoot, Shakespeare of London. My next volume is a paperback. I do buy some paperbacks. I tend to prefer hardbacks just for a durability factor. Um, there are some paperbacks that I really love, so I'll grab them. And this is one I that's been around for years. And this is the complete tales and poems of Edgar Allan Poe by Vintage Press. Let me see the back. Um, I don't know how long it's been out. It's got to be a long, long to 80s or something. Oh, no, I'm wrong. September 1975. So I would have been a teenager then. Um, it's in remark. Look at the spine. The, um, sometimes having a floppy old paperback can be nice. I mean, if, if I found a fancy version of Poe, I might or might not buy it. But, um, some of the ones I love, uh, MS Found in a Bottle, I really like. Uh, Fall House of Usher, The Pit and the Pendulum. What was the movie? Was it Vincent Price? It was somebody, I don't remember. Years ago when I was young. The Casco Amontillado I've loved forever. Um, I'm not going to read every one of them to you, but uh, Telltale Heart, The Raven, Lenore, which I always love. I love the poems. So, um, I was happy to find this. And then finally, The Great Treasure. Every once in a while you find that thing. Now, I'm not saying a book dealer would go gaga over it or anything else. It's a treasure to me, and that's what books are supposed to be. If you saw my shelf tour of the first bookcase, you'd realize I have us these volumes in a beautiful, beautiful folio edition with illustrations, gorgeous orangey box, um, very just beautiful book and it's Robert Graves the Greek myths um, the Greek myths I found a copy today I'd never seen before and I was very excited and it's from the 1950s and it's American and it's from right after he published it in Britain and it's in remarkable condition and I'm going to show you that it's in a slipcase Condition is wonderful. 
Robert Graves, The Greek Myths, a retelling of the stories of the Greek gods and heroes, embodying the conclusions of modern anthropology and archaeology. I'd never seen this set before. I don't know if you can see it here. The light's a little odd in here. So it's in the two volumes, just like the set I have downstairs. But again, totally different. So let me see if I can do this without cracking the, the box. As I said before, air pressure builds up in these. You just got to let them drop because if you don't, you're going to break the box. And somehow this box has survived for, what, let's see, 50, 50 plus years. Well, actually, 60 plus years. 62 years. So here they look individually. So volume, uh, volume one. The Greek myths. Nineteen fifty seven, George Braziller, Incorporated, New York. Nineteen fifty seven. Show you the pub page. Now, there are no illustrations and all that. Like the beautiful folio downstairs. The nice thing is, look at it in my hand. So then you look at volume two. Same type of thing. These are the contents. This has a little something special in the back. There's a map. So this is the Aegean, Crete, Greece, the Ionian Sea. It folds up nice and easy in there. So this was the treasure. So the combined price on this beautiful little boxed slipcase set of Robert Graves. I paid two dollars for that. So I was thrilled. Um, yeah, sometimes I do buy more than one copy of a book. Because the history of books is almost as fascinating what's in the book. And I am interested in what's in this book. But I'm also interested in how this book has been presented through history. There have been annotated versions. There have been abridged versions. Single volume versions. Illustrated versions of more than one kind and uh, this is one I had never seen so I was very happy so that entire book haul cost me about twenty dollars and uh, a couple hours and it was it was it was very enjoyable so I hope you uh, enjoyed this book too thank you